and welcome to my channel. Well, I decided to get some more Rough Riders Stoneworks. They've got several of their um, new release of this series. These are some of the older ones that I have that's picked up. I may have another one lurking around there somewhere. I can't find this. I took it off right here. I can't find the sheath for this one, the little Kydex sheath. But this is the Stoneworks neck knife one. Well, this is the box that it comes in. This one is RR2403, which is the Barlow. Now, this is a reissue Barlow. A redone one. A new number and everything. And right off the bat, I like this. If you're going to put a shield on the bolster, which I can take it without or with, this is the best one to do. I mean, to me, because it links to their past. You know, they got a little horseshoe there. It kind of links to, you know, the Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders and all that other stuff. It, it really gives it a nice traditional look. You know, what does that say on there? Tested sharp? Yeah, tested sharp. I guess he tested it, and it's sharp. We'll do a little hand model here. A little hand model cleaning. <laughs> Don't want anybody to get offended by dirty hands. <clears throat> All right. So the box, you notice the colors are yellow, blue, white, you know, abalone, all that stuff in there. And this one doesn't deviate by throwing in the green. I have no problems with the malachite or synthetic malachite they're throwing in the new ones. If it, you know, it looks like it's done right and everything. I was thinking about what attracts people to knives. Now, there's various things, you know. Everybody's got their own parameters. Some people are, you know, blade steels and everything else. But for one of the comments that Tobias put down in there, he listed a couple of things. But one of the first ones he said was appearance. And, you know, deep down inside, we're still, we branched off from, you know, part of us, became human and the other part became monkeys you know that's why they're still humans and still monkeys and why monkeys are not evolving they went a different branch of the evolutionary tree and uh we still have that shiny you know Ooh, it's attractive it's the same way with with like this for me with with a uh, a worn cliff shape to me it's that shape, man. It's that aerodynamic, sleek. You know, it looks like it's ready to run through the air. And then you've got a nice straight edge, and you still got a point. I mean, it combines a lot of uh, stylistic things to it. Now, the handle... Now, this is this is something that uh, someone pointed out. I think it was Paul. He said, does it have a, a gouge going through there? This you can only see if you turn the light a certain way. But yeah, because this is aluminum... I think there's a, there was a dent in this, and they just painted over it. I can see it for sure right here by this. That was there before the paint went on, the anodizing. Whatever. This is aluminum, so it's, it's, it's an anodizing probably or a paint. But, yeah, just looking at it, you don't see it as much. But, yeah, there, there is that one on there, and you can kind of see it going like this. And this is on the show side, too. But, you know, aluminum. Sixteen dollar knife. This is where, if you would have had bone or micarta, whatever did that little dent wouldn't show up. You wouldn't notice it. You know, that's the difference between them. All right. Now let's look at our little color scheme here. I'm not, Danny Dino's gonna have to do a good one on this one to make up all the different kind of stuffs. This is what Tobias used to call red bony base. Ja bloody base, ja bony base, bloody base jasper or something. It's a synthetic or a or a reconstitution, just like the turquoise. There may be real turquoise particles in there, but combined with resin. Uh, this should be mother of pearl right here. Real mother of pearl. This is real abalone or abalone. Abalone rhymes more with. There's there's different ways of pronouncing abalone, abalone. 
It's got a nice Barlow shape. All right, let's compare it with an older Rough Rider. All right, you see how they've they've moved the main blade to the front on this one? Because these were sometimes hard to get to, you know, on these older ones. And it can be done. I think they should have just raised uh, the spine of this blade right here and left the nail neck there and everything would have been perfect. They should look at it. If you look at it from the side, can you see the other nail neck? No. Well, that's because this one, they put the nail neck on this side. And that's going to confuse people that are used to Barlow's, you know, both opening on one side. But adapt and overcome, you know, get used to it. We can adapt. We're humans. There's a little, that's, that's natural in there. It looks like something weird going on, but that's, that's natural. Really good fit and finish. Now, these are going for about $20. I notice, you're going to notice price creep probably on new models and stuff. And that's just because nobody can escape inflation and shipping costs and cost of doing everything. So, oh, and also the people that are worried about, you know, Chinese knives and everything and, and, and American knives and all that stuff. American manufacturing is coming back. They're starting to realize that this this is too precarious. So, and, and China may or may not be uh, doing that much longer. So the, the days of, it's just like Japanese knives. There were a while when Japanese knives were coming around, when I was coming out, at first they were junk, then they started uh, learning how to make them, and then they were really sought after. They really got their act together. And that's the same way with um, with Chinese knives. They're at the point where they've really gotten their act together. But they're finding out, you know, that uh, because their cost of living is going up and stuff too, Chinese labor is not as cheap as uh, Mexican labor nowadays here in the United States. So if you're looking for a cheap labor market, why go all the way over to China when you can get something done a lot closer? And that's what that's what drives things. It's, it's not, you may look at politics and everything, but it's the bottom dollar. Does it cost more to make it in China than nearby America or in America? Things will change. And it won't be because of us boycotting it or raising a big fuss on YouTube videos. It's going to be because the bean counters, the people that count the beans, are the ones that make the decisions and everything. Yeah, it's got a pretty nice pin blade there with a little swedgy on it. I'll, I'll include all the specifications on it, but yeah, nice half stop. This pull is uh, four or five. Not not real heavy uh, back spring on it, but it has a good lock lock up to it. And like I said, every oh, the fit and finish on this thing is great. I don't, I don't see any problems. Blades are in, oh. I mentioned on this other one, this display is off to one side. You see that? Is it off to one side now? <laughs> no, it looks centered, doesn't it? So, that may make you think, does it have side-to-side -side play? I think solid. Side-to-side, -side, up and down, it's solid. It locks in. So whatever that is, is just, a lot of times, a blade at rest sitting there is, Look at some of those that do like this and just push just push on it. Now it could be a bent blade, you know, in some cases you do this and the reason why it's hugging over there is the tip of the blade is bent, but this one's not bent. It's just the way they've got some kind of washers in here like brass. See them on the side? Brass washers in there. It's better than nylon. But anyway, let's get back to this guy. So yeah, these are cool. I like the way they look. It goes well with the uh, the older pattern, although the the angles are going in a. This is the newer the newer canoe, so they got their their angles lined up. Let's see, this would be the show side, wouldn't it? Huh. <clears throat> anyway, yeah. If you OCD on stuff like this, or you say I want it all look the same, you look at the canoe. I'm. Not the canoe, the um, copperhead. 
and it's got a lot of yellow in it as long as it looked good you know it looks good and everything so yeah i want to get the i want to get the large toothpick now you look at a lot of these and you think oh they got them in stock no problem man when they when they sell out of these things a lot of times they don't restock so you you're going to kick yourself in the butt if you're if you're going after a series and you think oh i got plenty of time let me collect other stuff and then Smokey runs out of it, and then eventually Chicago Knife Rook run out of it, and then you're, you're looking for them on eBay, and you're paying extra if you can find them. So, yeah, these are, I like these just because of the way they look, and they're, they're practical. You've got a pretty decent little clip point here. Do a quick measurement. See, it's not going to violate any laws like that. It's non-locking. It's two and a quarter inch cutting edge and maybe two and a half inch overall on the main blade. Let's look at the little pin blade. This one's a little bit a little bit stronger of a of a mainspring on her back spring. Alright, get over here. I rate that both of them about a five. Would you focus? Man. So you got an inch and a half pin blade. Nice one. This, this fits good in the hand. A barla was a little bit thicker width and everything. So if you're used to, say, a stockman or something, you've got a thinner, a thinner profile a lot of times. But thicker in the hand, look at that. This just it just fits perfect. Which means it's not gonna squirm around in your hand as much as something else. You got a little something to grab hold of yeah these are pretty cool so there you go that's the rough rider stoneworks rr2403 barlow pretty good addition to my barlows i don't have i don't have all of them out here but you know you got the novelty barlows all the barlow girls and then the marbles that's the single blade one the baron son that I won. The Baron Son that I won. <laughs> Alright, so, yeah. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day. I forgot to cut anything. Oh, yeah. Chart out of the box.